This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. I don't think that Jesus saved us just so we could be miserable until the sweet day when we go home to heaven. I think that eternal life starts the moment that we receive Christ and that we, I think it, I think it hurts God when we don't enjoy the life that Jesus died to give us. And we are so work accomplishment oriented in our Western society that I think sometimes we forget after God worked for six days creating everything, he rested. And so Adam's first full day on the earth was a day of rest. And we just, we, we get it upside down. We glorify work over everything else. And of course we should work and not be lazy, but God wants you to enjoy your life. He wants you to enjoy yourself. He wants you to enjoy your family, your kids. Don't just raise your kids, enjoy your kids. Don't just be married to somebody, enjoy them. The Bible says that a, w a wife should enjoy her husband. Amen. Thank you. And, um, and you need, you need to enjoy yourself. You have a home, take time to enjoy it. Don't just gripe because you got to clean it all the time. Enjoy it. Like I said this morning, if you hate your job, then go get one you can enjoy. Don't spend your life doing stuff that you hate. You've only got one life. How about making a decision to live it? How many of you need to enjoy your life more than what you do? Okay. You know, we don't want to just exist and drift from day to day and just be in this survival mode all the time. You know, when I was growing up, I just, I basically just tried to survive every day. And I looked forward to the day when I was 18 and could leave home and hopefully have a happy life. But I thought when I walked away from the problems that I grew up in, that I didn't have a problem anymore, but I really just took it with me. It was etched in my soul. And it was adversely affecting every single area of my life until I started not just going to church on Sunday, but actually being a full-time serious Christian. You know, there's a big difference in just going to church on Sunday and really being committed to learning how to live the life that Jesus died to give you. I think somebody watching by television needs to hear that. There's a big difference in just going to church, putting in your time, getting your check mark on your church calendar. There's a difference in that and really being serious about your walk with God and being committed to really learning how to be Christ-like and to live the life that Jesus really died to give you. Now, I want to talk to you for a minute about the painless path. <laughs> you know, getting hurt hurts. But oddly enough, getting well hurts too. You come to a point where it doesn't hurt anymore, but part of the reason why so many people stay broken is because there's also pain in the healing process. You know, you can injure yourself and the injury hurts, but while you're in the healing process, it still hurts, doesn't it? So I want you to understand if you're one of these people that decided with me this morning that you're gonna, you're ready for a life upgrade. You wanna not just be here and breathe, but you want to, have the life, the best upgraded life that Jesus died to give you. I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you that it's not just going to all be easy. For one thing, to get well, you have to face a lot of things about where you're at. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, it's not the truth about somebody else that's going to make you free. It's the truth about me facing the truth about me, that I had problems, that I was manipulative and controlling, that 
I was insecure no matter the fact that I acted bold really way down deep inside. I was insecure. Being honest with yourself about yourself is the bravest thing that you can ever do in your life. You see, God knows you and he loves you anyway. And you need to learn how to know you and love you anyway. I don't like everything I do, but I do like myself. I actually think that we are insulting God if we hate ourselves and refuse to have a good relationship with ourselves because we're not the epitome of the perfection that we think that we should be. Jesus didn't die for perfect people. He died for people that are imperfect and will continue to have some imperfections till he comes back to get us. The Bible says he didn't come for those that were well, but he came for those that were sick. Amen. And so I qualify for help from God and you do too. But in the natural, it's just the way we are. Our flesh is always going to look for a painless path. And so that's why I want to just be clear with you that if you really want to get well, it, there's going to be some challenges to it. And it's not going to happen super quick. It happens little by little. God changes you from glory to glory. But the good news is, is if you're on your way to full recovery, at least you're on your way somewhere. Did you hear me? And that's better than just being stuck nowhere. There's two kinds of pain we can talk about today. The pain of change or the pain of never changing. And you know what? The thought of staying the same is really scary to me. I mean, it just makes me shiver to think that I could still be the way that I used to be 42 years ago. Now, there's been a lot of pain getting from there to here. Oh, but there's been more joy than pain. And I certainly am glad that God gave me the grace to not give up. And you have to keep in mind that every little bit of progress you get, you can then share that progress with somebody else. People need to see people overcome. They need the courage to realize, well, if you can do it, then maybe I can do it. There's a saying my husband's always had, fast and fragile, slow and solid. What comes together fast can also come apart fast. But what is built slowly can become solid. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but God's not in a hurry. Has anybody realized that God's not in a hurry? You know why? Because he's more interested in quality than quantity. Amen. Don't get stuck in the trap of just trying to see how much of your Bible you can read every day so you can feel proud of yourself. God would rather that you stare at two verses for an hour and get something out of it than to read seven chapters and not know what you read when you got done. <laughs> of all the people we need to stop trying to impress, it's God. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yes. Because he knows us. So quality over quantity. Don't be in such a hurry. We need to wise up that just stop looking for everything to be easy. We need to toughen up a little bit and be willing to go through whatever we need to go through to have what we say that we want to have. You know, a lot of people are jealous of successful people or they're jealous of people that, I don't know, stay in shape and, you know, still look good in their 40s or 50s or whatever. And or you're, you're jealous of somebody's home or jealous of somebody's job or maybe you you're old enough to retire and you don't have hardly anything and you're jealous of people that you know that have got this nice income level now at retirement we need to stop being jealous of people 
that are blessed if we don't want to do what they did to get what they've got. Come on. Moment of truth. I want to make sure you understand this because I don't want to be telling you things that aren't true. If your soul has been severely damaged by abuse, rejection, loss, abandonment, long-term illness, or anything else, the journey back to wholeness won't be easy. It's not just going to be, boy, I went to that conference and listened to two sessions on healing the soul and I'm all put together now and everything is fine. No, it is easy for you to sit out there and clap and cheer for everything that I say. And you can clap and cheer every time I tell you about every victory that I've gotten, but my victory won't give you victory. <laughs> you have to still go through the same things. All anybody can do is light the way, but you still have to walk the walk. Bible says in Ephesians 2.10, that I, I've laid out, God said, I have laid out a, a good path for you that you might walk in it. Jesus paid the price for us to have a good life, but we're going to have to get up off our little bottoms and do what he tells us to do. And it's not all going to be easy, but it is going to be worth it. Being miserable all the time isn't easy either. Amen. I mean, is anybody tired of putting all your energy into being miserable and being mad and you just as soon now turn that energy around to doing something that's going somewhere? Amen. All right. Narrow path, broad path. Matthew seven thirteen. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad and easy to travel. So I love that easy to travel is the path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss. Look at that. How good that is. The broad path, it's easy to travel, but it leads to destruction and loss. And there are many, many, many people who enter on that path. If you get on the broad path, you will never be lonely. There will always be lots of people on that path. But small is the gate and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads the way to everlasting life. And there are few who find it. Let me tell you something. Pain almost always means progress. Especially if it's the kind of pain that we're talking about today. The pain of making right choices. Let me tell you something. It, it's hard to be nice to somebody that's not being nice to you. Come on, do I need to say that again? It's hard to forgive people that have hurt you. It's not fun to pray for your enemies. That's the thing about spiritual wholeness. It's about doing what God tells you to do. Whether it's easy or not. Do you suppose that what Jesus went through was easy? I don't think it was. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he was under such pressure, he sweated blood. So we could have the opportunity to sit here today and hear what we're hearing. I'm here to tell you that no matter what's happened to you, there's hope for your future. There's not much good news out in the world, but there's good news in here today. Today, I have good news. Your sins have already been paid for. Matter of fact, here's the fun thing. God has already done through Jesus everything that he ever needs to do for us. It's already been done. We're not waiting for him to do it. It's already been done and he's waiting for us to believe it. There's nothing that can keep you from having a great life if you're determined to take the narrow path and do what you need to do to have it. But it's not all going to be easy. I don't think that God's anointed us for easy. I think we have the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit in our, in our life for hard things. For difficult things. Somebody without God can't have trials and tribulations and stay happy, but we can. Come on, I said we can. 
because we've got somebody on our side. Galatians 6, 9 said, says, let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. Don't get tired of doing what's right. You may have to treat somebody right for a long time before they ever treat you right. Let me say it again. You may have to treat somebody right a long time before they ever treat you right. But here's a secret. Let's stop doing what we do to get a right result from God. Let's do what's right because it's right. And let's do what's right for God. Therefore, we can be committed to doing what's right as long as we're here and leave the results in God's hands. And I hope I get a lot of reward right here, but if I don't get all my reward here, I know I'm guaranteed one as soon as I'm finished here. Has it occurred to you lately that eternity is a long time? Forever is like a really long time. And I think we need to spend most of our time now preparing for there. And I hope that everything in my now time turns around and well, I wish I could just feel fantastic every day and nobody would ever give me any trouble and everybody would love me and nobody would ever reject me and that would, that would just be cool. But you know what? It's not going to happen. But by the grace and the mercy of God, I hope that I can continue to respond to every one of those situations the way Jesus would because I know that even if I don't get my full reward here, when I cross over, it's waiting for me. How many of you really believe that you're going to live forever? <laughs> okay. You know, Romans 14 says the time's going to come when every man will stand before God and give an account of his life. I'm not going to be asked to answer for somebody else, so I don't need to worry too much about them. I need to take care of myself. Come on now. If you're doing what's right, we worry too much about what everybody else is doing. Well, you should be doing this, and you should be doing that, and you should be doing this, and you shouldn't be doing that. Well, let's, let's get concerned about us. I want to make sure I'm doing what's right. Be not weary in well-doing. Don't get tired of doing what's right. For in due season, whatever that is, <laughs> we get so encouraged about that, we don't know when that is. At the appointed time. <laughs> What does that mean? I mean, when I was waiting for God to do a lot of the things I was believing for ministry-wise, it was back in the days where there was a pretty big outpouring of the Holy Spirit and there were a lot of people that came through the church and they prophesied to different people. And I couldn't even begin to tell you how many times somebody pointed me out of an audience and said, the Lord says unto you, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. The first few times it excited me, then I got tired of hearing it. <laughs> because I realized that I still didn't know anything any more than I knew before. But one thing you can be assured of, when God knows you're ready, whatever it is that he's been preparing you for, come on. I said, whatever it is that God's been preparing you for, when God knows you're ready, no devil in hell can keep you from getting it. So why don't you just settle down and enjoy the journey? Because there's not anything that any one of us is going to do that's going to make God hurry. When we're doing what's right and it hurts, that means that we're making spiritual progress. Think about that. Spiritual maturity requires obeying God when it's difficult to do so. I like some of these statements. I wrote them, but I still like them. <laughs> Boy, you know, we get, we get so excited when we hear the word free. Man, I tell you, free conference, free books, free... I, you know what? Ooh. 
We just love free. I mean, we just think we're really getting by with something when we get something free. Free. But you know what? What's free to you, somebody paid for. Come on. Salvation's a free gift, but Jesus paid for it. It cost him. This conference was free to you, but our partners around the world paid for you to come and just sit here and enjoy yourself this weekend. And we do that because we want you to come and hear the truth because we know the truth will make you free. And we believe then that you'll be transformed into somebody who wants to give to the kingdom of God to make good things happen for somebody else. But don't fool yourself. There's really nothing that's free. If you've gained a bunch of weight and you need to lose it, you're going to have to be hungry. Well, and don't waste your money buying the fat melting pill off TV. Because there is no such thing as doing nothing and getting a right result. Come on, that's just not going to work. If you got yourself deep in debt, now you're going to have to really scrimp and maybe do some extra work and do without some stuff for a good period of time. Don't think you can just go have somebody lay hands on you and pray for you that all your debt's going to disappear. Come on, let's act like we've got a little bit of brains anyway. The painless path is not the best one to look for. Because <laughs> even if you found it, you wouldn't find that it will take you where you want to go. We like quick fixes, don't we? Our prayer is often, Lord, make me patient and please do it in a quick, in a hurry. <laughs> I think this is good. You know, a mushroom can grow overnight. Has anybody ever one day your yard looks fine and the next day you got a bunch of mushrooms in it? But a large oak or a giant sequoia takes a long time. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be a mushroom or a giant tree of righteousness? We got a lot of mushroom Christians. <laughs> Come on. There's no scripture in the Bible that compares us to a mushroom. But Jeremiah 17, 8 says, For he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river, and it will not fear the heat when it comes. But its leaves will be green and moist, and it will not be anxious or concerned in a whole year of drought, nor will it stop bearing fruit. Now come on, that's what God wants. For years I lived with a wounded soul due to sexual abuse, but I learned that God could heal my deepest hurts. And I'm really asking you not to spend another year of your life in the same kind of misery that maybe you've been in in the past. And in my book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. Call 1-800-727-9673 or go to JoyceMeyer.org. Life consists of beauty and chaos. Life is messy, but you don't have to be. This is your invitation to wrap up in peace that makes no sense. Run to hope in the center of chaos. Announcing the Love Life Women's Conference 2023. At the 2023 Love Life Women's Conference, I'll teach you how to trust God and find calm in the chaos. Don't just survive when you can be blessed in the midst of this beautiful mess. Featuring Joyce and her guests, Bishop T.D. Jakes, Lisa Bevere, Natalie Grant, and Danny Gogi. October 19th through the 21st in San Antonio, Texas. Register today at JoyceMeyer.org. In our world today, there's an epidemic of anxiety. There's so much coming against us, and for many, 
It's causing not just worry, but an overwhelming and frightening state of panic. There are keys to dealing with this, and I want to help you use God's Word to fight and win the battle for inner peace. My book, The Answer to Anxiety, will help you through the process of eliminating tormenting thoughts and replacing them with the peace that passes all understanding. Joyce Meyer's The Answer to Anxiety, available wherever books are sold. What if you are labeled as less than just because you're a girl? And you're told this is God's intent for you and every other female. It's very hard in our culture to be a girl. To tell you all the time that you are nothing, you God created you just because he wanted to hold the man in his life. That's very hard because all the time you grow up without hope. Sally asked to hide her identity because she hopes that her family will one day come to Christ. Until then, out of respect for them, it is best for her to remain anonymous. If her community knew how she felt, her family would be shamed. If you're thinking you you should like you want to do something in the future, you 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 want to go outside, you want to study th- something. You feel all the time you should back and be housewife and do uh, something for children, for the house, for the culture, not to be like yourself and what you want really to be. As you can imagine, this deeply impacted Sally's relationship with a God who she understood to have no use for her. When I pray, I was feel empty. I feel that I love him, but he don't love me because I'm the girl. Then I start to read the Bible and learn about Jesus and follow Jesus. And I start hear the Joyce Meyer. And all the time when I see her, I see, wow, how much God love her and use her. So I start thinking, okay, maybe I can do something also. And then I just fall in love. I, I feel like I was really empty and then in just a moment, I fall in love. And I, I, for the first time, I feel God. So how important do you believe that it is then what we're doing with Project Girl? It's very important. You give the girl hope. In our culture, like we don't have a, a woman bastard. When you see her give the message and many men hear what she preach. So it's give you the hope, like, okay, maybe someday in our culture, in our land, we will see this. We hope you enjoyed today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.